Good morning, folks. Top stories. The long-sighted objects of speculation described as light orbs in Norway may have a distinctly electrical answer. Ground chemistry and moving water acting like a battery, and I'm imagining our overcharged atmospheres playing a role as well. You may have seen something about a square hole on the sun recently. Poor reporting. You see corona holes here every day. This is no different. Certainly not even as cool as some of the other shapes of holes we've seen, like the chicken man or the broken cone. To be honest, this one didn't even look like a square. Anyway, top story of the day found by Star Observer, published in February of 2013. It's well established that the movement of the planets create different torques within the other planets and the sun based on the changing center of mass of the solar system. But now, using old Hungarian auroral records to build models of the future, matches the movement of those planets and would have accurately predicted most solar activity we've seen, and indeed predict an extended solar minimum or solar grand minimum centered around the year 2030. We got our latest monthly U.S. climate update. I've linked it for you below so you can see the significant April events. When we pull up the temperature map for just April, we see more of the same hotter and colder than normal. Compiling for January through April year to date, we see more of the same but to those greater extremes we're always watching. If you've been watching here, you know that cold has actually dominated high temperature records this year worldwide, not just in the US, and that's from the US government websites. But the end of 2014 should see the other side of the swing. NASA's Earth Observatory today on a coming El Nino. Our video on the topic is from April 23rd, and we indeed appear to have a hotter end of 2014 en route. Remember this when the green agenda tells you it's pollution causing heat this winter. Today's weather warnings are light except for the US will have some severe weather today throughout that warning region. Meanwhile, the storm forecast feature on Weather Online shows that we have little to expect apart from the normal conditions for parts of South America and Africa. The North Atlantic low refused to get out of the water. Let's kick it to space weather where solar wind is calm and returning smooth curves to the sensitive meters. Space weather quiet. The departing Corona Holes windstream will be here in another day or two and the next one is incoming down south already. You see the dark area on the left side turning. Quick update to the solar pole flip in progress. Our latest data is from April 22nd and shows an incomplete but darn close to being done flip. South is heading in the right direction further negative and the north needs to go positive this cycle. Almost there and for all we know that's what we watched happen when the coronal fields went ballistic on us this past week. Solar flaring? Be still my beating heart, are we set for an uptick? The departing groups were signals of a weak star. They indeed lit off a high C yesterday, but given the size and time of the cycle, it was disappointing. The southern active region continues to grow its lead umbra, but lacks any delta spots. Meanwhile, there's a radically fast-growing sunspot group incoming on the north. At first, it appeared these may have been part of a larger plague area that was decaying, but indeed, these are newborn sunspots. Watch them grow, and then increase their umbral field power. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.